Welcome to Art Bazaar, a podcast that chats with artists of all types to explore the depths of creativity. Brought to you by the Alternative Gallery. We'll be releasing new episodes every Wednesday with bonus episodes dropping randomly. If you like what you're hearing, you can support this podcast by going to thealternativegallery.com and clicking on the podcast tab. I'm your host, Brandon Wonder, creative director of the Alternative Gallery, a nonprofit arts organization in Allentown, PA, run through the efforts of dedicated volunteers. On this episode of Art Bazaar, we're joined by Maltas Con Leche, a family of artists consisting of Rafa, Jubilee, Sour Panda, and Cat. Maltas Con Leche was designed as a collaborative space for Rafa and his family to create an array of mediums, including illustrations, paintings, community murals, and even tattoos, as well as live demos and workshops. You can check out their work by going to their website, maltasconleche.com. And the Alternative Gallery has been working with Maltas Con Leche pretty much since the gallery began. So it's great to have them here to chat about all their creative endeavors. Maltas Con Leche, welcome to the Yard Bazaar. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Let's get into it. Y'all ready to have a great chat about art and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? So I guess just to start very directly, can you tell us what Maltas Con Leche is and maybe the roots of how it started? I want to mention uh, Benicio. Benicio's not here because he's in college. Five of us on a regular. We're the, five, we're the core, so it's five of us. So Benicio's in college right now, that's so why he's not here. But um, Maltas Con Leche, well, Malta is a drink. It's made out of malt. It's very common in Central and South America. And con means with, and leche is milk. And it's about the blending of it. And I felt all my kids have very Latin names. I didn't want them to run away with who they were from. I thought that this was kind of cool because we're mixing, right? So we're all different generations, different eras, but we're keeping that that one thing that we have in common, right? So when people see it, it's like for them, it's very nostalgic. They're like, oh, Malta. And I don't know what I could refer to it in any other culture, but I found out that even Middle East has Maltas. So really? they, yeah, they got Maltas as well. And how it came about was during one day we were playing um, rock band back in the day and we had the whole kit and I think I had the mic and all of them had an instrument and I just yelled out Maltas con leche and I was just introducing the kids into look you can make another drink by mixing these two drinks and it kind of just stuck amazing and you chose this to be your art name like a yeah like a group name a family name so I was like you know what it starts with M our last name is Menendez and Maltas is just like hey like if you know about it you know so in my mind it just felt like it made sense and I know we talked about some of the mediums that you guys work on in the intro, but do you want to expand on that? What specifically, who does what? I'll start with Ben, because ben, Ben's not here. Ben's currently screen printing, and he's into sculpting. He's an amazing painter, but he's focusing on screen printing and sculpting right now. I do painting, graffiti. I used to teach special effects makeup, and I still love that and hope to do it one day again. Tattooing. Um, do you guys want to say your own stuff? Yeah, I mean, me, Sour Panda. I Sour do, Panda. I do oil painting, and I'm a tattoo artist. All right. I'm Jubilee, but um, I mainly just work in animation, mostly 2D, but I really like stop motion as well. Awesome. I'm Kat. I play electric bass, but recently I've been really into fashion and everything, so I've been trying to lean more into that. Wow. So now you have some music and fashion in this as, as well. A whole mixed bag of arts here. Does anyone get jealous of anyone else here? <laughs> no. All very supportive Maybe of one just another. Admire. Just admire. Yeah. That's the way it should be. Yeah. Very nice. So, Raph, you're originally from Queens. Queens, New York. Yep. Yeah. So, did that help kind of plant the seed? Because New York has a little bit of everything, especially graffiti. Yeah. Did that help plant the creative seeds for you? Like, how'd you get into art? Uh, I mean, I've drawn throughout my whole life. As a kid, I always drew. Uh, Back in the day, it was normal to leave your kid home alone. So, like, my mom had to go to work, single mom. So, five years old, you were left home alone. That's normal. That was, like, normal culture back then. And I grew up in the 80s. So, yeah, graffiti was still out there. You could still see a train pull up fully covered, graffiti everywhere. And it was inspirational. And I grew up between two projects. And so, like, you wanted to know how to do it. So, I really quick into lettering and just drawing. And, yeah, that's all. It was inspiration. I didn't know what an art museum was. That was art for me. I thought it was extremely impressive, like to see, yo, how they get up there. That's all you would want to know. How'd you get up there? Like, how they get on the train tracks, or how did they do this? Or how they, and you try to figure it out and emulate it if you could. That mystery is still alive and well. 
<laughs> there are places that people get to. I'm like, what? How, what? Yeah. What do you have a grappling hook? What are you Batman here? Exactly. How did you get grappling up there? hooks, everything. There's all kinds of tactics. And that's one of my favorite parts of New York is the trains. The fact that they're basically traveling art galleries. They were right. They were, and I was like, they billboards. Were. Just giant every, billboards. Every, every now and then you might still see one if it's fresh, but they really clamp down on that. But the trains around here, the freight trains, they're painted up just like the old New York subway cars were. We hit up some <laughs> when they were a lot younger. We, we did our thing. and Nice. You so took them a bombing. I did, actually. Wow. We took them a bombing, uh, we pasting, and then uh, not knowing when you're teaching your kids anything, not knowing. I remember one day we had a lesson. And I was teaching Benicio, who's not here now, uh, how to just throw a quick lettering. And I always told my kids, that's why we came up with Sarah Panda. It's like, never put out your name out there because that's how you get caught. You got to come up with an identity, alternate, you know, like a superhero. You got to come up with a different name. And I taught him some lettering and a train broke down by our neighborhood. And this guy literally went and tagged it up in front of the house. Like, yo, you can't do that. It was right by the house. He tagged up MCL. And I was no. proud and like, don't do that. Like, we're in PA. You can get locked up. You can get in trouble. Yeah, there's a certain proximity from your house. And <laughs> it was literally right, right outside the front door. Right in front, it was it. literally in front of the front door. Like, you can never do that again. Wow. But I'm proud of you, but you can never do you that again. Did you get caught? No, no, no. Wow. Caught, so. I guess that could have been a much harder lesson learned there, but. Yeah. So when did you move to Allentown? We moved out here 2007. So I've been here since. Did you start with the arts immediately upon arrival? I never stopped doing art. Art was always like, just kind of in the background, little stuff crafts with the kids or um so art was i mean i went to school for art so art was always there it just wasn't the breadwinner or it was a hobby kind of like the way my teachers told me in college like hey you're gonna choose this career you're gonna have to get another job the story of too many artists in this country yeah do you do art full-time now yeah yeah how what was that transition like like how did you make that happen sheesh that took forever that took forever i mean i i'm grateful for you and the art gallery because I feel like you guys gave me that push and inspiration, right? So it wasn't until somebody told me like, hey, there's an art gallery at the Holiday Inn. You should go check it out. And then when I think they got me your number or somebody's number. This is 2012. Was it? Yeah. The, yeah. So the, like one of your first shows where I met Sharks Apparel and when I first met Mops back then. I think Jay. that was our very first show. Yeah, yeah. No, it was like, yeah, the first one we did a vending and we went... With a garbage can, and we stood there, and I still got that garbage can. Oh uh, yeah, see the, the the yellow rat garbage can. No, right? it's another one with no? teeth. We traded with we 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 bartered with with Jay. Okay, and we got a painting, and they took the garbage can. It was like this pink with teeth. I wonder if Jay has it. I don't know. We'll have but, to ask. Jay's here actually, so we'll okay, have to go okay. upstairs and harass him about it. <laughs> but um, it inspired me, and I felt like. You know, you get caught up in the rat race. You got to make a living, got a big family, you got to pay these bills. So I'm like, maybe art wasn't for me, even though I went to college. But then when I saw it, in my head, I said, well, you, you went to college. You might as well, like, maybe pass it on to your kids. So anything I knew, I showed it to them. And that's how I've been with anything, whether it's a, a book, a movie, or a skill. Like, hey, if I know it, I'm going to pass it on. Unlike my generation, like, your parents never shared anything. It was all secretive. Kids, mind your business. It's kids stuff. It's adult stuff. Like me, I share it all. Maybe too much. Sour Panda, do you remember anything from being a kid when your dad showed you art? I don't know if anything sticked out because it was just like there all my life. So it's like that's all I remember. But I don't think anything personally sticks out to me. No? It always seemed normal to you it, to it's, have it? Yeah, it's genuinely normal. It's like yeah? wake up, art, sleep, art. What was the first kind of art you were interested in? Probably just like maybe like anime. Anime. Art. I think that's kind of I was like, ooh, that's so cool. I want to do stuff like that. Yeah. And I think, you know trying to draw like dragon ball characters in my sketchbook i don't know pop me off and everything but, awesome yeah. yeah anime is huge in this generation which i love because i guess when we were growing up anime was for nerds now it's for the cool kids i like nice. that's where maybe the nerds just took over yeah no the nerds is definitely running everything now i'm very it's happy about that so you talked about you know our original gallery location down on ninth and hamilton street you were only there for about a year and a half. Do you have any memories of those days, some of those events? Yeah, I mean, for me, I didn't get encouraged to do art at all, at all. There was no encouragement. Even when I was in college, like, nobody saw a point to it. It's not something that you encourage your kids to do. So for me, I felt like I had to do the opposite. So I knew my kids were all talented, and I was like, hey, like, we can do this. And I remember telling them, hey, no, like, if I'm in it, you're in it. And, like, that, I don't know if it was a Halloween show, the first one that we did, or it was, like, a Halloween theme. 
And I was really excited just about to just to share that moment. For me, it's always going to be about the process, sharing that moment and watching them create and just having them like, look, like it doesn't matter how old you are. You're an artist now. If you believe it, then it, that's what it is. And that was like my big thing. And then through that platform that you guys created here, that was like, that's it. That was like the push. Without it, like, who knows? Like, really, like, we got to own that. Like, like Brandon, like, you guys are part of it. Like, you're part of Malta's. Like, without even, maybe you don't realize it. Like, if you didn't create that platform, we wouldn't have those art shows. To this day, we still do theme stuff. We're still doing shows. And, but it started with there. Like, hey, like, wow. you guys could do it. I didn't realize that was that much of a launching pad for what you guys do now. Because you said you moved here in 2007. Yeah. That was 2012. Yeah. So those five years, you didn't really get involved with any art spaces? There was none really to get nothing really like. Wow. I'm going to say no. I don't, I can't, I can't picture anything outside of something small, uh, but no. And that was a huge driving factor to starting the gallery is that so many of these like-minded artists, especially artists into graffiti and street art, they didn't have anywhere to go. That was a big no-no in the gallery scene in Lehigh Valley. We had to change that because, I mean, th these are legitimate art forms that had nowhere to go. If you didn't have those uh, gallery shows, what do you think you guys would be doing now? No anime. <laughs> You'd still be watching anime. I have no idea. I don't know. Uh, it's a good question, but I felt like, for me, more than the art, whether it sold or didn't sold, it was just producing and you get into that habit of producing. You're building the habits. So it's the producing. It's the deadline. It's the that part I'm, I, I'm pretty good with. Like, it's the deadline. And we're doing it together. Like, hey, like, like we're at the same level. Like, yeah, I'm dad. And, like, back then they were even younger. Like, no, we're in the same level. But we're all artists. Like, I really saw it that way. Coming from New York, I saw kids, when my kids were younger, when they started, they had agents already. To me, art is treated like something different. I treated art always like sports. Parents push their kids. You're going to be the best wrestler. You're going to be the best. I saw it the same way. I told all my kids. And I told my daughter now she's going to get to fashion. I was like, listen, this is not a hobby. If you're going to do it, then do it. And treat it like it. So like, yeah, you should know about the art. You should have the medium. You should practice. Are you sketching? Are you drawing? And like, take it serious. Like we would go to New York and like, take your sketchbooks. We're on the train. Let's draw people. This is my sports for my kids so that it's muscle memory. So when I'm not around and they're all working on their own projects, I'm like really proud of them. Like, damn, you guys are doing it. Like, you know what I mean? But it's been kind of like built in throughout the years you know that's a great saying be the person that you needed as a kid and i think that's what you're in a lot of ways being to your own children because you didn't have that support structure for you to create art so you're making sure that you are supportive in their endeavors probably too much sometimes i right? so you know you, you you push a little too hard and still you know there's no perfect way of parenting i'm still trying to find the balance uh you know i think this idea of perfection is it's an abstract idea in our mind you do things a little better when you apply yourself and try but yeah immersing yourself is so important and you said it a little bit earlier deadlines deadlines are key for artists because we will just keep working on stuff or more likely just putting it off until we have to do it our backs against the wall boom piece is done <laughs> we just we just finished something for the cedar crest college and literally, like, we've known all summer long. And I was like, we got to get started on this thing. And we got the canvases. The canvases were probably in the house for, like, three weeks. And sure enough, the deadline was turning. It was, like, Monday to Thursday. You know we turned it in on Thursday. Of course. Yeah. But. If you're turning it early, you're not, you're not <laughs> trying hard enough. That's yeah. just how it goes. Yeah, the stress level was insane, but yeah, we did it. So, you know, we started on Hamilton Street, and then we moved over here to 4th and Tillman, and you fortunately followed us along and kept doing stuff here. And you've done community murals on our building, across the street from the building, and inside the building. Can you talk about what those experiences have been like doing community murals here? Awesome. Awesome? <laughs> I'd say, yeah, I think it was like... I guess those maybe are like highlight moments. Like I just remember us being like, let's just do whatever, whatever. I just remember my dad being like, do whatever you're best at. Like you don't have to do this. Like there was no specific like, it needs to be this. It was he was just like, do whatever you want. Like and have fun with it. And I think that's what I enjoyed so much as a kid. It was just like fun for me. It wasn't like work. I was like, ooh, we're all painting this mural together. So cool, and it's on a big wall. So. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it because I know your dad was always dragging you from place to place and to hear that you were having fun yeah. is nice. How about you? Any memories, either one of you? I think for me, it was definitely a lot of fun. I remember bragging to my friends about it, like, oh, I painted on a wall. Everybody's going to see it. It was really, like, a highlight, especially because I felt like when we did those, like, I was just, like, 
starting to remember things. I was like five or six years old and they were really fun. It was like probably like one of the highlights of my childhood. Yeah, and the one right there on 4th and Tillman is still there. We were just looking at that. Like, that. Think like, about how many cars drive by that every day. One of my favorite things here is just looking out the window and seeing random people stopping and taking photos of the murals or they give their phone to a friend and have a friend take a photo of them in front of the murals. Having people stop and look at art is so important. And we actually, it was an uphill battle to get those. You remember that? I remember. The the APD was after us because they were trying to say that we had to have permits, which ended up not being true. It's like the city was doing everything to stop art. And then when we do have artists that get grants to do murals and they want to do them around this building because this place means something to them, the funders usually try to talk them out of doing it in this neighborhood and do it down on Hamilton Street. But it's like, this is the area that needs it. The neighborhoods need this. But they want, you know, in the nice little shopping area and stuff like that. So how is it seeing that mural still there? Are you happy about that? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> very cool seeing it. It's that's very great. nostalgic. I, I can replay the... Cause that's, those are the days that I would bring the, the, the girls to come and help with the children's art class. And again, I would just fall back and let them do it. And you would see... It's so much different when you see kids on kids teaching versus an adult teaching and I would see these kids like you're not that much older than me and they would open up more and it to me it meant a lot like to me it meant a lot and it was like we don't go to church but to me it's definitely about community service and we're like hey like you know you gotta give back so for me that was like I've, I've always tried to push that like hey we gotta give back and it's funny you say that because this place is kind of my church so and you should start doing that again. If you want to come by and start doing some art classes with the kiddos or even workshops and stuff like that. We get to a point here where we have so many neighborhood kids that come into class, we don't even advertise the classes anymore. Okay. They're almost all kids that live directly around this building. That's awesome. Now, this time of year, they're kind of lazy and they don't come out. Yeah. But in the spring and summer, of course, they're getting here 15, 20 minutes late. But <laughs> one kid will leave and five more kids will come with them. It's amazing to see. And if, you know... You guys want to come back during the warmer months and do some stuff with the kiddos and these kids need it some of these kids are you know i get it it's a rough area i get it i get it i feel like you, you never know what seed you're planting and that's important yeah. you don't know yeah you don't know until you know i know you know we had last year i had seen randomly one kid that we knew when we first moved to this building his name was jonathan and he said he was like 18 years old now, which was crazy to me because when I met him, he was a little kid. And he said, I just want to thank you for allowing me to be in there because I was such a bad kid. But you would always welcome me back. And that I really think saved me. That place saved me to know that people cared because he had a very broken home. He had a younger sister who was getting some bad stuff. And I think this was like the only anchor they had in their lives. And again, like I said earlier, be who you need it when you were a child. I want to offer a space that I wish what I had when I was a kid. Weirdly enough, I grew up in this neighborhood. So for me to do what I do here is very, very special. And I'm glad that you guys get to be a part of it as well. So I know you run a space now of your own. Do you want to talk about that? It's still, I feel like, in the baby phase. So it's the rabbit hole. Rabbit hole has, has been moving around for a while. I had a rabbit hole version in Brooklyn in Sunset Park. Um, the first one was in um, a barber shop. A, a good my barber, my good friend, allowed his parents and family allowed me to use their basement low key. And now I have a really good space. I have a student. Um, I have a wall full of art. It's it's cool. It's close to home. It's a blessing. I didn't think I could get anything remotely near my home because everything's so expensive. A client of mine said, "Hey, my neighbor just moved out and." Like, she told me to rent. I was like, really? I was like, oh, can you give me the name of the landlord? And the landlord was an old-time guy from the area, and he saw me and just tossed me the key and said, hey, we'll talk about it later. Don't worry about it. Wow. Yeah. That's Super cool, yeah. The, the handshake agreement. It was literally a handshake agreement, and then we signed the lease in his house with a beer. That's my kind of agreement. Yeah. Wow. So this is kind of like a studio then, more yeah. of a studio than a gallery. It's a studio. Yeah, right now it's a it's it's where I mainly do my tattoos. But like I said, I have a student in there. I would like to do other stuff. Uh, I do love helping. I'm doing mentoring. But I guess that would lead into like the other stuff I'm doing now with the Latino Ice House. I guess that's like a bigger platform to help others. But uh, I like to have my own space where I can kind of help and guide. Yeah. How long has that space been open now? Your your September. Rat- September. Just yeah, just literally. Are you going to be hosting any events there this year? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I feel like that's kind of a low key spot. It is low key. Like I, I there's only my logo. There's no name. It, like you have to really look for it. 
you know it's like an art speakeasy it is i like it you know so it's like you you're like oh where where is it oh there is a rabbit and then you look for the rabbit and then there's another rabbit with an arrow that leads you to a door it's kind of like the matrix yeah follow the white rabbit you you gotta follow the rabbit nice so what are your hopes for that space you know what i'm not thinking too far ahead right now i'm really grateful and just happy with at the moment I'm happy for everybody that comes through. I'm grateful for I'm I'm in I'm present. So yeah, I have bigger plans. Like I have other ideas of a mobile version of it that's been on my plan for a while, but I'm just enjoying it. Like, you know what I mean? I'm not just being nice. present. I like that a lot. Just keep it low key and see what happens. Yeah, I'm going I'm going with the flow. Like I wasn't I didn't think I'd find anything and the opportunity came, I jumped on it. So when the mobile version of that comes out, then it, you'll know because it just you, came out. You know, it's funny you say that because I feel like so often in my life, things don't work out for me until I give up on them. Mm. Like I'm never going to find the space. Boom, there's the space. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of how it sounds like that's how it worked for you a little bit. Yeah, it was a blessing. Yeah. And if you didn't have the space to work out of, what would you be I doing? would be working right now from home. Like, you know, we have an art space. We got a graffiti wall in the garage. We have It's like an art store in there. Um, just a lot of art, royal art supplies, and then we have space in the yard. And then I was renting a tattoo space in Bethlehem, so I would have been renting that space still. Great, but, this but I have peace to... of mind now, though. Mm. And it's yours. Yes, and it's mine. That's great. So you had mentioned your Latino art event coming up. You want to talk about that? That's uh, this week, January nineteenth, correct? Yes. So I'm on this committee. It's called the Latino Ice House Committee, and it's a platform at the Ice House in, in Bethlehem. And it's a platform for people to, whether it's dance, music, visual, any type of art, food, if it's an art. And it's a free venue for artists. It's a free venue and that they could go and charge if they wanted to. And they were just trying to, the way it was explained to me is like we're trying to get Latinos from the South Side onto the North Side. So when people go to these high-end restaurants on the North Side, we want to advertise for them to come down and see this. So we're having this event, the meet and greet, and like I'm trying to pull as many people as I can to be present. The other lady that's helping me run it, her name is Michelle. She's a beast. She's I, I talk about her a lot. I'm like like admire her because she's a one woman show. She runs a Latin magazine. She has a community day, which I would love to do a community day. She literally opens up her office on Friday to help families, whatever they need, translating paperwork. I'm like I'm already kind of doing that. But on a phone basis, people call me to translate for them or could you come with me to court? And I go anyway. Like, yeah, I'll go to your court and I'll help you out. I, I do that already. But to have a scheduled day, something about that means a lot to me. Like, wow. I, I would love to do something like that. That's amazing. Yeah, so she's running it. She's well connected in the community. She's pulling tea from everywhere. What kind of artists do you have involved with this event? Yeah, so right now, um, Jay, I just confirmed Jay's going to do it. Uh, Jay Echeverria? Yes. One of our co-founders? Yes. Brandon Brandon Dominguez? Dominguez is going to be in it. Other artists that never even thought about showing. When, when th- those inspire me more. So there's a young guy that works at a barber shop, and I know he's a painter, and I'm like, he's like, I've never shown before. I'm like, you know what? That makes me even more excited. Honestly, those are the artists you should be focusing on. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, because they wanted me to reach out for artists that I feel already established that are in museums. And I'm like, oh, and in my head, I'm like, these guys already have the platform. They're already selling $10,000. They don't pieces. need you. They don't need you. Yeah. I'm like you're selling ten thousand dollar art pieces. Like, it's like I'm not I'm not trying to be a hater. I want everybody to win, but I'm like the the artists I'm bringing are, are just coming up. I have a Genesis who was here. She does characters. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a caricature artist. Yeah, and then she does pottery. And we just came from supporting one art. She just did like a mural at the art museum, which was earlier today. Wow. We were just there. Amazing. And um, you know, I'm trying to bring people up that people may not know are new artists. I'm also bringing. Uh, Tiana, she does fashion, uh, so she has, she sells her own fashion stuff. She said, "I have I know somebody else. So just bring them. It's all love. Like just bring them." Cat, um, you need to talk to Tiana. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I definitely do. Yeah. So speaking of fashion, what got you into fashion? Well, my mom's always like been into fashion, and like I was always really close to my mom, and. You know, I was also into fashion. I, I used to love dressing up and everything. And when I kind of, like, realized that I don't know if music is what I want to do, I was, like, looking at what else I was really interested in. And I was like, oh, fashion. And, like, I love looking at it. I love looking at runways. Like, I love just, like, learning about it, like, what inspired people to do, like, this and that. And 
it just like I was just like oh like I really want to do this like I'm really interested in it it's it definitely spe- like speak to me really quickly that's great well, when you're ready you can host a fashion show here oh I would love that you got some friends that do fashion as well um or maybe have the interest to because you hear how your dad's doing it he's finding people that have an interest in art but never thought about taking it serious I think us as artists, we got to find as many artist friends as possible. Yeah, I think I, I know one person who's into it. And I know a couple people are into like photography. And I was like, oh, those two definitely like go together. Absolutely. You could do an exhibition and a fashion show at the same night. I know I could. You should. <laughs> and your mom should be your one of your models. I know. Right? She should be like, I don't know. Do you ever- <laughs> My little manager or something. <laughs> there you go. She's the manager and the model. Do you ever have her like w- like try on your clothes that you make? Um, no. 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 But I talk to her about it. I look at her old photos a lot about like her when she was younger, and they inspire me a lot. Did she have a lot of style? She was. All right. Yeah, she did. She was yeah. a little fashion- fashionista. Oh. When I used to teach special effects, um, I had a little gig teaching special effects, and I would design something, and I would design the outfit, and my wife. My girlfriend then would make them, make the outfit. Whoa, that's amazing. So I wish like she would have stayed with it, but like, you know, like, but I say, hey, it's in you. It's not too it's late. It's in you, yeah, it's, it's not in too you. late. Like, you know, you have that. She, at the very least, sounds like she might have a managerial role coming up here. <laughs> yeah, she has a lot of swag. Yeah? Yeah. All right. She does. So you say you do uh, special effects. What got you into that, the special effects makeup? So my senior year in college... I realized I should have majored in industrial design and I should have listened to the professors when they told me like, hey, you really got a knack for drawing and creating and making it. It's like, no, no, I want to be an artist. And I'm like, shoot myself in the head. I realized that special effects is a career and I didn't know that then. I dove in deep and I'm like, well, I'm not switching my majors because I can't afford this. I'm going to graduate, but I found a way to make my senior show into a special effects show. Because I drew everything and then I had the prosthetics. I started doing, I've always been more into political or like editorial art. So like I did a prosthetic of a, of a face six times. And eventually that face turned into a full-blown pig. And it was a blue background, LED, meant to be seen like at a, at a bar. And like that was a piece. And that rubbed everybody, you know, a certain way, depending where, wow. you, where you looked at it. Like, yeah, you know, you start off as a man, but eventually if you drink this Kool-Aid, you're going to turn into a pig. Like, which is You never had any ambition of working in the film industry? I mean, special effects is kind of hand in hand. So, like I said, I dove in. I used to, like, now everything's on the internet. Back then I had to get a dusty old black and white book and read on how to make these molds. And I read it and I taught myself to the point where I, I was able to show a school that I can do it. And they hired me to teach other kids. But me being the poor business person that I am, I felt really bad on how much they were charging the kids. And I felt like they were getting ripped off. And I was telling them, like, hey, man, you guys are paying three times more than what these supplies actually cost. I didn't know. You know what I mean? I think that's at, a, at the heart of a lot of artists because we're not really business people. We're creative. We're creative. We want to share that. We don't I want to share the love. You know, I don't want you to be broke. We don't, don't want to charge for admission to learn. I mean, knowledge should be free. So, yeah. So I went to California uh, for a convention. And I got to meet um, Dick Smith. Awesome. Yeah. In person. I showed him my sketchbook. He loved it. I got to meet uh, Screaming George, George Romero. Oh, wow. And then uh, there's no regrets, but George Romero had offered me a uh, apprenticeship to clean molds. But at that time, one of you guys was on the way. Who was on the way? Jubilee. Was it you? Yeah, Jubilee was on her way. George A. Romero, the director of Night of the Living Dead, Dawn yes. of the Dead, Day of the Dead. He was at wow. this he was at this uh, makeup convention in Pasadena, California. And like to show you, like I didn't care. Like I flew out there with only money for a hotel stay for one day. So we slept in the park, me and my brother in law. And um he offered me but it doesn't pay. And my wife was pregnant with Jubilee here and I had already my uh son then, I guess he was, was Matthew then, I don't know, seven or eight. He was five. Five? Well, he was, yeah. So I already had a five year old. Like, I can't be responsible and work for free. I have nowhere to live. And I just took a deep breath. Like, yeah, these are going to be one of those decisions that, uh, you know, you're going to remember. The fork in the road. Yeah. And, you know, I was like, ah, I, I can't take it. But the fact that it was offered to me, 
I know I would have maximized that opportunity, but it was for good. Not saying you would, but if you wanted to, I'm sure you could jump right back into that. No, absolutely, absolutely. Definitely, I feel like PA is big on it. I think when the time's right, it'll come back out. Like, I, I was doing a zombie workshop in my garage. The people that knew, and every Halloween, people wanted their makeup done. I was like, hey, come over, and I'll do it. And they would pay me, and I'll just give them, like, a random makeup job. And they would go to their bar jobs or clubs all made up. That's dope. I always thought that Lehigh Valley had a lot of potential to be an independent filmmaking center, but we just haven't made that happen yet. Maybe if we do some workshops, think about it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm curious, this is for the kiddos, what artists are you looking up to right now? Like, who inspires you? For me, somebody that inspires me is probably Christopher Kane. He's a, he does fashion. And, like, he came up kind of, like, in the 2010s, like, s like very suddenly and, and like, just first runway was very like eye opening. He caught like everybody's eye. He like grew up the scale very quickly, and he just inspires me in what like what he does. It's very brightly colored, a lot of like lace and everything. Um, to me, he's just somebody who inspires me. How about you, Jubilee? Anyone? Not specifically a person, but I'm really inspired by Bobby Pill Studios. It's a uh, Paris. It's a an adult animation studio in Paris that's just kind of like a really small studio that just kind of does really stupid, funny cartoons. And they've grown really big over the year. Like they have a cartoon on Netflix now called Captain Laserhawk that was really amazing. But um, yeah, just like their ambition and just starting so small is just really inspiring. Do you want to start your own am animation studio? Um, Not my own animation studio. I would honestly like to go off to their studio and maybe like i don't know storyboard for them but like nice yeah what are some of your favorite shows right now animated shows favorite animated shows right now it could be old or new it's okay an older one that i really like is home movies from uh it was on adult swim right it was like a really old flash animation with like improv voices but yeah it was like, brandon small as a metal metal eclipse guy yeah home movies has my favorite ending of all time of anything yeah, it's it's such a yeah, it's such a comfort show, but that's probably one of my favorite cartoons. Yeah, what about anything modern? What like what's good right now? Like Bob's Burgers, you like that? I yeah, Bob's Burgers is another comfort show. Like I really enjoyed the movie and how just beautiful it looked overall. Yeah, but um, and Tina, her songs in that are just like top yeah. notch. Tina yeah. just makes life worth living. Some days she really do. <laughs> how about how about you, Sour Panda? <laughs> um, who's inspiring you these days? These days, it'd probably be my mentor. His name is Dennis, but he also goes by Savak. He's a tattoo artist, and his tattoos just look like oil paintings, which I think is so cool The for him to be able to, like, apply that on skin, and it's just crazy to me. So I'm like, wow, that's very inspiring. And that's what you're mainly focused on these days is tattoo, correct? Yes. Yeah? What about you, Raph? Any artists kind of like, whoa, blowing your mind a little bit? Um, I'll, I don't know if they're blowing my mind. I love art in general and like even the music. But I would say somebody that inspired me and I didn't forget, I think they go by on Instagram is Moto8. And it was a street artist from Japan. When we went to Japan, um, there was the most colorful, you can curse? Hell yeah. yeah it was the most colorful fucking box I saw. Do you remember Ghibli? It was fucking, it blew my fucking mind. Like, we went to a museum, but that fucking box was gorgeous. And it was just, it made no sense, but it ba it was so balanced. And he had two pieces of, like, electric boxes painted. And then, um, you know, I'm like, this guy's fucking amazing. And it just inspired me. And I felt like that approach made even more sense for Malta. I was like, oh, like, look, this motherfucker. It was like 10 different artists made this. And it's just one. It was just so so amazing. And he's a street artist. Um, he does murals and whatnot. He does graffiti. He does graphics now. But uh, he inspires me. Like, I, I love, I just love his work. Did you know about him before you went to Japan? No idea. Like, you I literally, discovered him there. In the street. And that's yeah. the best part. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like we're talking about art. Wow. Art should be out there. And, like. I, I agree with that. Yep. You know, I think, where the hell we stay at? Tokyo? Was that in Tokyo? Or Shinji, Shinjuku? Yeah. Yeah, we were over there in Shinjuku. And that's what I saw, and it just blew my mind. I remember taking the picture, and it's still my favorite pictures on my phone. And I'm like, eventually when I found them on social media, I was like, oh, thank goodness I can still see his work. 
Wow. First of all, I'm my mind is blown that you took a family art trip to Japan. Because <laughs> that's like high on my list. Like hopefully we're going to Japan later this year. What inspired you to go to Japan? I'm just curious. Oh, no. That was Jubilee's, uh, was it a sweet 16 gift or 15? 16. I don't know. I know we did your sweet 15. Uh, that's a hell of a gift. 17. Japan? Yeah, but it was only it was only us two. We can't afford the... Uh, like, ah, we just went, the two of you. Listen, we went... We ain't got no money for no tour guide. Sour Panda, how jealous were you? Um, actually, I was very jealous <laughs> yes. because act- when they were supposed to go to Japan, they I think they missed their flight, so they ended up going to Panama and Japan. And then you know, my sixteenth, I, I didn't go to Japan. No, or Panama. But, what you get? Um, well, the whole family came. I think we went to South Carolina. Yeah, but, yeah, that yeah. sounds nice, but it's no Japan. Yeah, we went to like a haunted mansion, and I hate ghosts, so I cried in there. And wow, yeah. so they just had fun bullying you for your birthday. It was like mm. it ended up being a family trip, which you know I love my family, but yeah. I was like, oh, I thought this was my birthday trip. Loving a little less after that, yeah, yeah. yeah. temporarily, of course. <laughs> wow, Japan. Any ambitions to go back to Japan, or travel, or it's, traveling in general? No, I love to travel. Like I'm trying to get to Singapore next. Yeah, I might go to Africa in August. Wow, uh, with a friend what, of mine. What part? Um, Ghana. Wow. Okay. For a wedding, I think you just need more money, right? So there was areas like we stayed in the city, so we only rode the train. Uh, I think we only took the a cab once because my navigation skills got us lost. And I was like, let's just pay for the cab. Just eat the bullet. We stayed in the Godzilla building. Oh, my God. You're killing me. Yeah, we stayed in the Godzilla building. That was awesome. It roared. It was like <sighs> a building. Uh, but we took the train, and the train system was dope, and everybody was so friendly, and there's so much stuff out there to look at, and people always are willing to help you. It was pretty cool. Was How many people spoke English that you encountered? Very few? or Because I know it used to be none. Now it's starting to become more common. I feel like we got lucky. We got lucky, yeah. I'm going to say in the street, people figured it out. This one guy still got his business card, spoke English. Everybody else kind of knew, and I, 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 I didn't care. I don't care how I look. I was like, I'm going to the Godzilla. You know, Godzilla building. I'd make sounds and building Godzilla, and they're like, Gojira. They would just point in this direction, and we just kept mm. walking until we found it. Wow. Toho Studios, man. Like, they, they kill it. They did uh, Seven Samurai. You ever see that? Yes. Yeah, so when you go, there's a statue there for Toho Act- actual studios at the Godzilla building, which I'm curious, was it expensive to stay there at the Godzilla Hotel? The most expensive thing was the flight. Well, of course. Yeah, the flight. And, um, and it's like a 20 hour flight. I think what my wife did is that she looked up like a whole package deal and then saw it and then she went and booked it on her own and saved half. Genius, I- I'm right? I'm going to have to talk to her when I go to Japan later. She's frugal. Time. She's genius. She found how to get it half. I'll bring back some threads for Kat to make your wife a dress as a thank you gift. <laughs> make everyone happy. I know it is expensive to travel, so kind of the thing that we're trying to do is, in a way, get paid to travel, or at least cover our costs of traveling by doing some of these art events. And maybe that's something we could talk about doing in the future around the country and even out of the country. Yeah. You ever consider doing an international art exhibition? Oh, man, I'm all about it. I'm all about it. I know I you think, said mobile rabbit hole. So. Listen, I, 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 I'm happy to say there's a mural in Colombia that was done for, I think it's called Activo 3030. It's an organiz- international organization that helps mentally challenged or gifted adults make a living. It literally shows them how to get a skill and make a living so they become independent. So I did a mural for them, and I'm like, nah, this is Malta's is over here now, you know. Um, I think I did something in Panama. Um, so no, I'm all about. I'm all about it. So you've done a mural in both Panama and Colombia already. And you traveled there. Yeah, that's amazing. And like you know, like my thing is just I just want to get up. Yeah, I just want to get up. Like yeah. show me a wall that uh, it's gonna be okay. Did they cover your travel expenses? No, nah. no. Uh, it never does. I feel like even the tattooing for me is more to fund the art. Yeah. So like I love to tattoo. It's fun, but it, my passion is painting with my kids or watching or doing something where anyone can see it. Yeah. Like, cause cut tattoo, you can cover up. Yeah. 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 But if you paint on a wall, you paint somewhere visible, big, like, like scale, um, the reward or that feeling like, Hey, you're, you just changed the mood of that building or that, that space. And that to me is like, you so just reshape more. that environment. Yeah. Yeah. So much and more. It's amazing that public art can do that so simply. And what I've noticed about public art, it's already taking hold before it's finished. Mm. You see people out there watching it. Yeah. be created and talking to the artists we have people that live across the street from the building who we've never met after years but the second someone's out there painting a mural they're out there all curious and chatting with everyone 
It's like, this is what it takes. Just do some art. How about Sour Panda? We'll start with you. Okay. Where would you like to travel? I think I'd like to travel. I'd like to go to Colombia. Colombia? Yeah. How come? Well, my dad gone so many times and, you know, he talks about how amazing it is and all the family we have out there. And, you know, I want to experience that. I want to be one with the culture and everything. Yeah. So. Of course. Yeah. How about you, Jubilee? I think I'd want to travel to, like, France. Just French animation is, like, really... It's just really big right now, especially with, like, the animation school Goblins. is just, like, pretty... I don't know. Just so epic. But, I love yeah. how much you love animation. It's all I think about, to you, be honest. You, you know what? We have an animation festival, right? I heard about it, yeah. Yeah, it's coming back this year. It's going to be in July at the Emmaus Theater. Yeah, I'm... I'm trying to finish up a film for it, yeah. to be honest. Well, maybe you can help us recruit some uh, more animators to be a part of it, too. We should chat more about that because yeah. we feel like, basically, I want my animation festival to turn into a TV channel that shows animated films 24 hours a day, and it pays animators to create films as well as have their films on that. Oh, yeah, that sounds really sick. Right? Yeah. I'm glad you like it. How about you, Kat? Where would you like to go? I would probably go to London because of the fashion. And it's London. It's I mean, London. Yeah. Okay, great. Are there any notable projects? Because I know you've done so many different types of projects over the years. Are there any specific projects you want to talk about? Maybe Music Fest. That was such I mean, a, that was such yeah, that was a recent one. Why don't you talk about that? Yeah, that was a big one. That was, uh, that was a blessing. Like That was a big one. That... I wouldn't be on this committee if it wasn't for Music Fest. That committee, that because people all of a sudden people coming out of woodworks like, hey, hey, like, hey, you want to be part of this? You want to be part of that? I'm like, yeah, why, yeah, we've been doing this for years. I would love to be part of it. It's amazing how you do nothing differently, but you do a project, and all of a sudden it opens doors and people take you serious. It's kind of bullshit, right? It is, man. But it's it, nice, but a bullshit. Is yeah, you're right, you're right. I remember looking, oh, uh, you know. At the Banana Factory, like, oh man, maybe one day we'll be in there. Like, look, and we you know we got lucky enough to be in it for a couple of months. That's great. Yeah, because they gave you a studio, right? They gave, While us, you were... they gave us a studio, the months, uh, one to create it. Mm -hmm. So we got a, a studio for like three months, uh, 2022, to create it. And then for the summer of Music Fest, we got it for like three months. Awesome. So what was that experience like making that poster? Was it all of you? Was it one of you? It was all of us, yeah, all yeah. Of us, including Ben, who's not here right now. So the painting process of the actual mural that's up there at the ArtQuest building, even my, uh, she's six now, the little one got to get her hands on it, which isn't good. And, and for her, like, you know, like, she brags about it all the time. Like she goes to school talking about, you know I'm an artist, right? You know I'm an artist. Ah, she's throwing a, that around. She throws around like, you know, could we got any stickers we can give my teacher? Because she knows that we did this music festival. I was like, oh my god. I goodness. think you need to make that girl some business cards. She's a diva. She's a diva. She's going to be trouble. So I'm curious now, what is what is the creative process like when you're first coming up with the idea? Do you kind of just like sit there and be like, all right, what, what does everyone envision for this project? How does that? Because I know most artists, they just kind of go about it on their own. Now, when it's a collaboration like this, how does that work? Like for the music fest poster, yeah, um, yeah. In general, I think in general, I get in right? general, in general, in general. But if there was anything specific for that one, well, for that one, um, I don't remember her name, but the lady who came to us, I think she was like, "Well, I want it to be like fun, Julianne, bright and happy, and you know, she just gave us like some key pointers or whatever, and we were like, okay, let's bounce off of that, and we all, I remember, we all sat at the table and we were just like. We picked out like a color palette and we were just like, okay, let's all make our own version of the poster and whatever we like, like we'll pick at it and put it all together. I remember I that's like I like that. About. So you each made your own poster and kind of borrow elements and yeah. combine like them. the whole Matas Coleche, right? The mixing it. That's and, awesome. And, and that's been like for every project that we do, unless somebody feels really strong about one, one thing, but it's always been like, even when we get jobs, like somebody reaches out to me and they have a job, I'll like text the group chat and like, hey, who wants to do this? I always make sure my kids go for it first. Like they want it, they, they get that job. So yeah, we'll just uh, sit down at the table. We'll give ourselves like a week. And even like when Jubilee, Jubilee wasn't around because she was in college and on the West Coast, she was in Portland. But she designed and she sent it in and we had to duplicate her image. So like, you know, it doesn't matter the distance. We're still working together as a family. Are there any issues with collaboration or does it at this point go pretty smooth for you? I feel like it goes smooth, but... 
Yeah, I don't, I don't, it could be just maybe, but I feel like it goes smooth. Like, it's very organic. I try to keep it very fun. We center it around food. If we're painting outdoors, like, hey, what are we going to eat? And, yeah, that's uh, the big motivator. That's the food? motivator. For yeah. That is the best motivator. Yeah, like, what are we going to eat next? And then... Um, so, like, if there's a certain theme, like, all right, we're going to order Chinese for this one, right? Or pizza? Or is it just what you're craving in general? Just thinking of a reward after mm. like mm. Ooh, where are we gonna eat at yay like that's about it <laughs> it don't matter where just we be hungry so your art only exists for the desire to go eat some great for, food for eating <laughs> that's a hell of a reason one of the best reasons to make art in my opinion jubilee what's portland like uh portland's really cool and like a really conservative state it's its own little pocket of just like really great people and really great artists and it's like the stop motion town over there in portland is like three other studios from where i was located which was the northwest area but um portland's just really great we're gonna be traveling to portland later this year what do you recommend we check out yard museum's really cool they have a the rose garden is pretty big they have a japanese garden but i um, saw that that's on top of my list yeah it's really it really is beautiful but um it's a pretty it's a pretty big one too it looks like it's pretty big yeah you have to like walk up a hill it's like yeah it's a whole ordeal okay that's um, i'm fine with hills no, yeah, a lot of really just colorful people there. Definitely the art in that place is just, like, crazy with the graffiti. Did you have a car there, or was it all public transit and walking? All public transit. Nice. Yeah. So we don't have to rent a car when we go? Like, driving in Portland is pretty crazy, to be honest. Yeah. The streets make no sense whatsoever. Well, yeah. I so my friend Andy, who was on a few episodes ago, she lives in Portland, and she was telling me all about it. She said that pr- pretty much everywhere it's, like, speed limit's 25 miles an hour. For yeah. the most part, in in the, the city, most part, yeah. and that people actually obey it. Yeah, yeah. Def- I feel like definitely in the day, in the night, it gets pretty crazy. People will just do whatever they want. Yeah. But um, yeah, in the day. There, I'm I'm sure compared to the East Coast here, you know, it's a lot better as far as how people drive because it's, it's madness out here anymore with these cars. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. Portland's really weird. Like the last time I was in a car with my with my friends, someone like fully just like ramped into another car right in front of us so we we're like oh okay oh, wow. now are you, are you done with portland or are you going back i'm mm, i'm done with portland i really do want to go back to the west coast just because the vibe there was just like really great and like i met a lot of really great people but um for now i'm, I'm good you good for that no okay yeah. great so arts fest you've been a part of arts fest too right yeah did we I think so yeah you've I know done- we went I know we definitely you, went to all of them. Yeah, you didn't you do some wheat paste and stuff like that on the wall that we had? Arts Fest, is that the one in the park? Yeah, yeah the Cedar park Beach Park, did, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were. It was a while ago. Yeah, we've done yeah. this whole throwback. We, we haven't done it since 2019, which is wow. five years ago, which is crazy to say. Yeah. Yes. We want to bring it back, but it's like super expensive now. No, I can only imagine. 2019, it was 65000 ish to do. Now it's like over a hundred. With changing nothing, it's the exact same festival as 2019. So yeah, without I don't do you know anybody with a hundred thousand dollars? Anyone here? No, <laughs> that's they're willing to just give to us with you know we don't have to pay it back or anything like that. No. <laughs> so what, what what's your what, what do you remember from Arts Fest? Like what was that festival like? I remember being very fun and seeing it was like surprising seeing how not surprising but like seeing all these people just come out of nowhere and like so many different things going on like remember there was like this tent like some guy like screaming his head off i don't know he was singing or something and then outside there's like someone on a little guitar and then there's graffiti going on and like food and people selling stuff like it was just very cool impressive to see in the middle of valentown huh yeah if we do a fest if we bring arts fest back would you like to be involved in some capacity of course what would you like to do Oh my god i don't know would yes. you like to have a booth and sell your <laughs> art no, now i remember oh we- you get tattoo there oh my god i i, I don't know why yeah. not you I, wouldn't do that we did the i remember now we did um we were in the children's booth okay that's what we were working yeah. on too i think a couple of years we the did AG, the, booth. the ag clubhouse we yeah call it. we did that Next and like i said park. i love I, me personally i love working with kids as you could you know it's yeah just, kids are great my man. passion like yeah like, you never know you just don't know who, how they these kids could be the next whatever i know it's amazing and the fact that you're trying to get these people that consider themselves normal people that might do art on the side trying to get them to take art more serious you might put that kid on the path 
So I know you said when you were talking to me about the January 19th event, you said that was the first of a series, right? Yes. So this is a volunteer committee, and everybody got regular jobs. So it's very difficult to pin people down. And I think me and you were talking about that before. So like, even though there's technically eight members, it's probably just like three that kind of are, are reachable on a regular basis. So it's a lot of work. So we had to reduce it down to five more events coming up. So right now, we're definitely going to do music as the next event. And we, I have to create the calendar, like yesterday, to submit to Bethlehem so they have the green light to move it. It's like all these, I mean, you know. Are they all planned for Ice House? or Yeah, everything, okay. everything's going to be in the Ice House. That's the whole That's point. It's a great venue. It's because it's free. It's The city owns it. And like all the potential sponsors will be there and be promoted there. So it'll all be for the Ice House. And what's the duration like? So you're doing this one in January. The second one is that planned for February? It's in March. So March. we we had to X the February because it, it it's a lot of work. I get it. Yeah, it is. So it is. a lot of people are like, listen, I can't commit. And I had already lost a member, and I'm like, man, how do I? So as as the chair, my goal now is really to make it fun, not make it too stressful for everyone, and just make them, you know, like try to remind everybody, like, why are we doing this? I know why I'm doing it. Like I like. If, if it was up to me, it would be a broader span, but I volunteered and I'm in it now, so I have to keep it to the narrative that they have, but I would open up to everybody, like for me personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, it is what it is, um, but we have it for the whole year. The next one's going to be in March, another one in July, September. I think we have October, November. So, but, I, but I have every day for the month. So if I could come up with something... For February 3rd, I can put it on. Are you looking for volunteers and people to potentially join this committee? I would like that, but there was a, uh, I don't know who's going to hear this, but like there's people that show up to potentially be part of it and they kind of derail it. And I try to find the most polite way to say, shut the fuck up, bro. Shut the fuck up. Sometimes you just got to <laughs> say it that way. Because people come in and they're like, they come with a whole bag of history and they're Pulling it and like, oh my God, you know how hard it is to get just the agenda done? You're derailing the meeting, bro. Yo, and I'm like, but I don't want to like gatekeep it. So I, I reach out to the members like, hey, how do you guys want to vote people in or vote people out? Whatever. Like, like. so it's it's scary. It's scary. Right now we're marching yeah. towards the 19th. Yeah, no, I feel you. Like even with the AG, when we need volunteers and stuff like that, we rarely put out a call on social media. Because when we've done that in the past, we've gotten like the craziest of yeah, the crazy. You'll get chaos. Yeah. You can't control that. And then no. I don't want to hurt nobody's feeling because the intentions are good, but Exactly. But like it's a team effort. Like, yeah. It's it's a whole So maybe if anyone isn't crazy and they come out on the nineteenth, <laughs> find Raf and pull him aside and be like, Hey, I'm not gonna derail what you guys are already working on. <laughs> I wanna be a part of what you're doing, not, you know, the leader. Because you can't just step in and be the leader right away. You got to absorb what's happening and kind of figure things out. And I know exactly what you're talking about. People just showing up and good ideas, but it has nothing to do with it's unrelated yeah. to what we're talking about. Let's focus on this yes. thing. And again, it's volunteer based. So mm -hmm. we only have so much time to discuss these things and plan these things. Don't waste Raph's time. If yeah, you're don't come waste out. my time. But don't still come out. Time. Yeah, come just, out of support and like. Yeah, that's what the whole point of the meet and greet is, is to meet everybody on the whole committee. And hopefully, just within the artists, like, I'll be writing something up to send to everybody. Like, hey, don't stick to your table. Go out and talk to everybody because you don't know who you're going to meet. You don't know who you're going to inspire. Like, just go out and mingle. Get out of your comfort zone. Yeah, absolutely. So are there uh, any requests that you have for those listening, how they might be able to support either Maltos con Leche or any of these events you're doing? Well, it has its dedicated IG, so it's uh, Latino Ice House, and it has a Facebook. So right now, I'm managing the IG account, and the Facebook is managed by almost everybody in the committee. So you can reach out to either one. We were meeting every two weeks, but attendance was so poor, so I'm thinking we'll meet once a month, and I'll just do the one-on-ones to get the ball rolling. Maybe even try a virtual meeting. Maybe you'll get more people that way. I mean, it's hard. I it's know. Hard. Every, hard. Nothing, nothing's easy in this <laughs> it's world. It's hard. Yeah, but I get it. I get it. Yeah. So what is the time of the event this Friday? It's from 6 to 9. Okay. I'll and be, it's a I'll free... be there at 12. You're going to be there at 12 <laughs> Yeah, man, I got to make sure it's the first one. I got to oh, make sure everything wow. goes good. All first man work. in, last man out. Yeah, yeah, you know how it is. 
and the first one to cry when no one's looking. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know how it goes. <laughs> the kids will hear me bitch about it. Like, like this is so stressful. Throwing like, shit around in the garage. I'll just like somebody give me a beer. <laughs> okay, I will get you a beer. Yeah. <laughs> and that's one of the things at Ice House. I wish they had was a kitchen, and a bar. Yeah, yeah, no alcohol. That's like one of the things that this says, no alcohol. That's crazy to me. But I'm bringing a... Um, Bethlehem, it's an art event. We need to drink. I invited um, Country Club Brewing because it's a Puerto Rican family-owned bar. Like the daughter's behind there. The the wife thinks brews it or the husband brews it, but it's a family business. And like, yo, you're like three blocks away. Y'all can't sell it, but nobody's saying you can't promote it. So come on down. Or maybe buy a wristband. Whatever. For thirty dollars. <laughs> and come back and then go back to their place. I wonder why Bethlehem doesn't allow alcohol there. I've never do you have any insight to that? No, nah, man. Like I don't know anybody. I'm I'm new to this. This is yeah. my first like Well, committee. and you don't want to push right out of the gate here too. I'm just trying to keep the peace, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean that's uh, that place in general, if it had a kitchen, because that's the thing, like you're not within walking distance to get food anywhere. Correct. So what are you gonna get? Like I think the wooden match is the closest thing and you're gonna get engulfed by cigar smoke so i mean they got some good music there don't get me wrong yeah but cigars aren't my thing yeah yeah i tried to eat a meal there the other day because i was like let me try this place out since i'm so close and i was like wow i came out smelling like a smoker's room yeah it's not my not my thing not at all i'm not no. but i tried it yeah i tried how was it. the food at least i think it was okay it was okay can't mm-hmm. complain yeah you think it, you just couldn't fully taste it over the smoke? It was a lot of smoke, man. Yeah. I remember like, oh, okay, you know, you had to figure out your breathing. Don't take too much of a deep breath. Mm. But, you know, breathe slowly. And this time of year, at this time of year, you don't want to sit outside either. No, nah, you wasn't going to nah. be outside. It was too cold. That's a shame. I hope the absolute best for this event on the 19th. And I'm sure you're going to get a great turnout. I know we're coming out. Oh, no, I'm rolling that. out like the Wu-Tang Clan. Going to bring a bunch of folks with me. Please, that's all I can ask for. Everybody, yeah. I told everybody, bring 10 people. All right. Bring 10 people, at least 10 people. So for all 10 of you listening, each one of you bring 10. So yeah. we'll have tell a friend, 100 tell a friend, people. Tell a friend. Yeah. And that's the thing too. Like, I think it's important that artists go out and support these things. That's how, like, because you've come out to the artist meetups we've done, right? And what has been your experience there meeting these other artists? Like, isn't that kind of the key of what we need? Yeah, absolutely. Like, even um, we're talking about it today. Like, I went to this event. I got invited by Genesis. And she sent me a DM, hey, you know, I, I, I was like, oh, I put on my calendar, I showed up, and then when I got there, it was so crowded. I was like, I needed to be here. Like, and even my, my daughters saw a whole bunch of old art teachers there. I saw other people from the community that I work with. I saw my co-chair there with her kid. At the event today? Yeah, yeah. And then I saw um, Quartel uh, Q, who owns Taste Smokers at um, Bethlehem. He was on the cipher. He, I was like, oh, look. And he has a lot of our artwork at his at his restaurant. I was like, oh, I was supposed to be here. Like, look, this is the community. This is the community right here. And just, I thought it was amazing. Like, like, you know, like you you hope you don't miss it. Yeah. And then I guess there's like an underground um, poetry group developing out of that. Nice. And I thought that was beautiful. I was like, yeah, you know what? Like, this is where I am on a Monday afternoon. I know the art museum is trying to modernize here. Mm. It's taking them a long time, but it's steps in the right direction. It sounds. Yeah, no, it was it was cool. Yeah, you got to come out and support. Like, you know, like, do I ever want to go? No. I'm fucking tired. I got shit to do. It's you know, Nobody wants to go out to stuff, man. You, you know, there's a million reasons to just not go out, but it's really important that we go out to these things. Yeah, every time I go, it's worth it. Like, you meet somebody. You yeah. don't know what connection you're going to make or just how are you going to get inspired. Yeah, and that's the thing, too. Like, you know, here at the AG, if I want people to come out to my stuff, I got to go, be going out and supporting their stuff. And that's the thing I'm trying to do a lot better this year. Because with us being so busy and a lot of times having events at the same time, we don't get to go out to these things and we miss them. So we're trying to be a lot more mindful this year of attending more events because we're missing stuff. Yeah. And then, you know, we, it's no harm or foul intentionally from us. We're not trying to diss someone by not going out, but some people don't take it that way. Yeah, I mean. Like, oh, you didn't show up. That's fucked up. I'm not coming out to your thing. It's like, dude, I'm like barely able to stay alive most days and you want us to do more stuff it's not that easy but we're changing our schedule and we're approaching things differently this year because that's how we're going to keep this community strong by going out to other events so any final thoughts or words you want people to know about your event on friday yeah just come on i mean in general it's for me i know my intentions is i just hopefully if there's a free platform for artists to be able to showcase like if i don't know how to do it maybe i can help you find how you can do it. i can point you to the right direction like it's definitely a 
going to be an amazing network opportunity. Awesome. And I like to ask a bit of advice before we close out to give to any artists who are getting their start some words of encouragement I'd like to go through each of you if you'd like what about you Raph? starting with you so for me i'm gonna i'm gonna say just do it that you can't do it for money money always comes you can't do it for money do it for your passion like like don't like if you're passionate about something just just chase it like you have to work another job and i heard you say in another another um interviews as well but like if you really Give a shit about it, then put the energy in it. Like, if you don't put no time into your passion, you can't complain about it. Don't cry about it. Like, oh, I didn't make it. Like, well, bitch, well, how much time did you put into it? Because if you didn't put no fucking time into it, then you can't bitch about it. Like, nobody sees how long it took you guys to get here. Nobody recognizes, like, our our day is 2012. Matter of fact, your first show, that's, that's our anniversary, June 2012. Wow. Like, that's how long we've been painting as a family. That's when the gallery started, June yeah. 2012. 2012 is our anniversary. We're connected. See? Yeah, so it's just go and do it and don't look for anybody else's admiration. Don't look for, to please anybody else. You just have to be happy with it. That's it. Just you be happy with it and just keep it doing. Hell yeah. I always tell artists to create selfishly. It's the best foot to start out on. How about you, Sour Panda? Any words of advice to fellow creators that might be struggling to get their start? Yes. I think I'd pretty much just go off what my dad said. Like, just do it. There's no right or wrong when it comes to art. I think a lot of times when people think of art, they think of like like portrait realism. And it's like, no, it's like whatever you want. Like you go to museums and you see like those big canvases with like splat or like a dot. And it's like, but it speaks to somebody. It made somebody feel a way. And then like whoever made that, you know, made that. So it's like, just have fun with it. Don't limit yourself and just be expressive. That's about it. Yeah, that's a great point. I think a lot of people, maybe non-artists especially, they are limited in their view of what art is. Yeah. And it could be a lot more than just sculpture or abstract painting. It could be animation. So Jubilee, what words would you give to artists or maybe even animators since you're so super focused on that? Uh, I'd say like have fun and be stupid. Like, not everything has to be so serious. You can just, like, do whatever you want. Just have fun. Like, like don't even think about it. Like, if you enjoy it, just, like, you know, just enjoy it. Great. And you should enjoy it because, like your dad said, if you're not, you're not doing it for money, you better be doing it for enjoyment. So have some fun. Now, Kat, you were a little kiddo when you started this. So maybe you have some advice for kids that were your age who maybe they want to get started with art. What would you tell them? I would say probably, like, don't be scared and definitely just like take it head on all those opportunities that like you see like just do it because like you're gonna regret it later if you don't that's great lots of great advice from the family once again we've been spending time with maltas con leche a family of artists who create with an array of mediums including illustrations paintings community murals and even tattoos and we've also heard fashion animation screen printing sculpture be sure to check them out on social media Maltas con leche, that's M-A-L-T-A-S-C-O-N-L-E-C-H-E, and of course, maltasconleche.com. Thank you to Raf and the entire family for being with us today. No, it was a very you. enlightening conversation about what you all do, and it's amazing that you get to work together. I think what you have is very, very unique. I think more families should totally steal the idea of what you do. I feel like this is just normal. So like when people point it out, it's normal. Um, I don't want to make it longer, but like, we did, before the pandemic, we did art night at home. We did art night for almost a year and a half, every single Monday, every single Monday. And what art night was, and I always tell people, I think I, I spoke somewhere, and they say, well, how do I get my kids started? It's like, just do it. So art night was every single Monday, each one of us had to run it. So if I did it, I was like, hey, we're going to copy this style. And then back to the whole food thing, the reason I got everybody's buy-in, because it would only take 45 minutes, I was like, if you run it, I'll get whatever snack you want. Here's the food part, right? So, and then we would play whatever music you want. So, as a dad, I got to hear what my kids listen to. I got to know what kind of snacks they like, and I would they would teach us individually how to do it. And we did it every Monday religiously, like you know what I mean. Just for sometimes it was you know it was what it was, but it was consistent. And I would just say for anybody who's a who's a parent and they want your kids to do it, you just have to spend time and do it with your kids. 
Yeah, that's incredible. I actually remember you telling me about those art nights, and I'm glad you brought it up because I totally forgot about it. <laughs> and that's something that I think families should engage in. On our Instagram, if you scroll down, I have it. It says art night, art night. Like literally what we did, what each kid did, and how they did it. And it was just time together, right? So no TV. It was just we're sitting at our messy ass kitchen table creating and then knowing that we have to finish because yeah, I got school tomorrow because it was on a Monday night. That's so cool. Do you still do those? No, we stopped. We stopped. Um, you should do one every now and then. Yeah, but well, now we got the, the, the babies and those guys are monsters. Like, <laughs> <laughs> those are very, they're very difficult. Like, well, yeah. Well, it sounds like you'll have new trainees in the near future. <sighs> yeah, yeah, it's a whole other, I have to readjust my toolbox with yeah. these two. yeah. Well, again, thank you all for taking the time to be here and make sure you go out and support Raf's event on Friday. What was the name of the event again? It's called, it's a meet and greet. It's really, it's called a meet and greet. And then, yeah, I think that's what it's called. It's a meet and greet. And it's a Latino Ice House Committee. At the Ice House in Bethlehem, 7 to 9 p.m., right? 6 six to 9. 6 to 9 p.m. But I'll be there at 12. <laughs> and Raph will be there all day. <laughs> Sneak him a beer if you can, because he's going to need it. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna Even it. if it's in a parking lot. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to probably have a, a mug. All right. A Music Fest mug with yeah. your yeah, art right. on it. <laughs> Go get a free refill somewhere. Yeah, right. Well, thank you, Maltes Con Leche. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Please like and subscribe to the podcast. We want to help this grow. And we'll see you next time on the Art Bazaar. Mm-hmm.